and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new stamp set, You Goat This, and its coordinating dies. We're also going to be introducing our brand new slimline picket fence border, which is so cute and perfect for setting the scene on a slimline card for these adorable goats. First, we're going to take a look at the stamp set, and these goats are just too cute. So we have two larger goats that are facing each other, and then three smaller goats, which you can do cute scenes with, and also stack them on top of each other, which is really sweet. We have a hay bale to help set the scene, and then we also have some grasses as well. And then a cute little trio of flowers that gives kind of a fun meadow look. We have an individual flower that the goats can hold in their mouths and a little tin can as well. We have a little bow tie or hair bow and a little flower crown for these goats. There's a little solid heart which you can fit in this adorable speech bubble. And then we also have these little lines that you can put on the goat's tail as if he's wagging his tail, which is so cute. And then we have some fun little sentiments for that speech bubble there. I heart ma and I heart pa. Perfect for Mother's Day and Father's Day. We have this cute little phrase that says crunch munch, which is so cute with the goats eating the flowers or grass. And then we have some fun sentiments. We have hey there. And then we have happy mothers or Father's Day. Then we have the phrase, you goat this, which always cracks me up. And then we have two phrases that go with something else. So we have you are, and then we have hope your day is, and then we have the goat, G-O-A-T. And then underneath that, you can stamp in parentheses, greatest of all time. And I love that phrase so much because you could do it for Mother's Day, Father's Day, for birthdays, or for congratulations as well. Now we're going to be using our Copic markers to add some color to these adorable goats. And these goats are so much fun to color in, especially because they have little spots here. And so you can see I'm doing kind of a darker look all around the edges of the spot and then going lighter in towards the center. And then the rest of the goat is going to be white. So I'm just taking a light gray marker and just going around the edges of his legs, the little spot. And then I'm taking the colorless blender and just blending it out so that there's no harsh lines. Then I'll fill in his little antlers there. I think those are called antlers. I'm not totally sure, maybe horns. <laughs> and then we're gonna add a little color to his collar and then that adorable little bell around his neck. And then we're gonna work with a different shade of brown for this other goat. And what I like to do is I like to lay down my lightest marker to kind of test out the areas where my darkest marker is gonna go. It kind of gives me an idea if I like what it's gonna look like before committing to that darker marker. Then I laid down the dark marker. Now I'm blending it out with the medium. And then I'm gonna finish the whole thing with the light marker. And look how cute he's looking. And so for this guy, we colored in the goat's body and then I've left the spots white. And so we're gonna take a nice light gray marker and go around the spots just to give them a little bit of shadow and blend it out with the colorless blender, kind of the opposite of the goat we did earlier. Now we're going to start working with this other goat here and we're going to do this goat in a similar style to the one that we just did where he's going to have white spots and then a dark brown body. Um, and this guy, I think he might be my favorite. I just think he's so sweet. And here I'm adding a little bit of a shadow around where his spot is. I feel like it makes the spot almost look three-dimensional. And so I'm going to do that with the spot around his snout as well, adding a really nice dark shadow right around that spot. And you can see, look how pretty it looks. It just pops. And now we're gonna work on the next goat. And this little guy might be my favorite. He's the one that goes really well with the crunch munch because it looks like he's maybe chewing some grass or flowers there. So adorable. And so once again, we're just gonna add shadow in a similar way. And by having those little spots and those little areas that help guide my shadows, it makes these guys so easy and fun to color in. Just adorable. And then of course, for the spot this time, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm actually gonna use a darker brown on the spots. So instead of having a white spot um, and a brown body, or vice versa. This time we're going to have a lighter brown body and a dark spot. So lots of different ways to color them in and you could use any of those different ways on the different goats. Now we're going to color in this little hay bale there and then work on our last goat. And this time we're going to do some grays just for something a little bit different. Uh, but we'll be adding shadow in a similar way where we have um, the darker shadow around the spot and then just following kind of the curves and edges of the legs to help add in the other shadowed areas on this adorable little goat. And man, I just love these guys. I think they're just so cute. A little rosy cheek, and then we're going to add some color to these grasses. These grasses are so great. I keep using them on other cards that aren't even goat cards because they're just fun for filling in and setting the scene. And then we're going to add some color to these adorable flowers. I like coloring these in a color that kind of matches my color scheme or pattern paper that I might be using, so you can mix and match colors for those. Um, and then we'll color in our cute little tin can there. I like the cool gray markers for the tin can. It looks kind of metallic. 
Now these are the coordinating dies which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. We're going to line them up with the stamped images, hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine, and we're going to have perfectly cut out images every time. And then here is a look at all of the images from the set in some different ways to mix and match them. So you can have that little guy hold the flower, put the grasses around to help set the scene. That guy can jump off the hay bale. You can add the little flower crown to the goats and the little bow as a bow tie. And then you can stack the goats on top of each other, which is one of my favorite things, especially this triple stack here. It's just so cute and sweet. Um, and so there's so many different ways to help create adorable little scenes with these guys. So much fun and so adorable. Now here is that slimline picket fence border die and this is the perfect size for slimline cards. And so we wanted to show you here that the die actually cuts it a little bit longer so that you can perfectly fit it onto the card and then you can just trim off the edges. So I just love this fence die and Shari's going to have an adorable card at this end of the video using it. But first up Shari is going to make an adorable mini slimline card and then I'll be back to make a magic picture changer. So take it away Shari. Today I'm making a mini slimline card with the You Goat This stamp set. You can see I've already colored and cut out my goats and my images and I'll set those aside. And then I'm going to pull out the Perfectly Plaid Remix Paper Pack. And I'm going to use that light blue plaid as my background for my card. This makes a really nice sky that has some interest and texture to it. Since a mini slimline is three inches by six inches, I can simply cut that six inch square in half. And then I am ready to stamp my sentiment at the top. So the sentiment says, hope your day is the goat. And I'm lining that up. The plaid makes that really easy to line up actually. And then I can just pick those stamps up with the door of my Misty and stamp them down in some black ink. So hope your day is the goat and then the second half of my sentiment is going to go on the bottom that says greatest of all time to explain the goat part of the sentiment. First I'm going to take that piece of cilantro cardstock and cut the top of it with a grassy hillside border die and ink up the edge with some Lucky Clover Distress Oxide. I really like this Lucky Clover Distress Oxide on the cilantro cardstock. I really think it adds some nice definition to whatever that die cut edge is. And I'm just pulling that down from the grassy edge down towards the bottom. Then I can stamp the rest of my sentiment right along the bottom of this grassy hillside. Just lining it up, making sure it's nice and straight. Pick that up with the door of the Misty and stamp it in some black ink as well. And then I can put all my pieces onto my card base. So I have a card base that's three inches by six inches that's side folding. I've just put some adhesive all over that piece of plaid paper that I have. And then I can add my grass to the bottom. Now I can make my little scene. So my little goats are going to stack on top of each other. So I'm starting out with some thick foam squares for the first goat. And then on the second goat, I'm going to add a little bow tie to him to give him some decoration. And then for him, I'm going to use some thin foam squares. So he's still popped up on foam, but not quite as popped up as the goat on the bottom. And then for the goat on the top, I'm going to glue that one directly to the card base. So I kind of have some varying heights of my images versus them all being at the same height, which I think adds even more interest to the scene, gives it a more three-dimensional look. I'm going to add this little flower to the mouth of that goat on the top. And then I also have some of the little grass images from the set that I've colored and cut out. I'm just adding those to the bottom. I think that adds even more interest to the grass. I've got that little tin can, which I'm gonna add down there as well. I am popping that one up on a foam square. And then I have the little flowers. So I'll just add those to the grass as well. So that's why I kind of left that big green area between my goat and my sentiment. 
so I could add these elements to the grass below. And then finally have that little speech bubble. I'll add that to the top and for this one I just wanted to add a little heart to that bubble. So there is a solid heart in this set that I will just stamp directly into that little bubble. There are some messages that fit in there as well, but I liked just the little heart for this particular card. And then here is that finished mini slimline card with these stacked goats, which I just think is so much fun. This card is so cute, Shari. I love it so much. And next up, I'm so excited to be creating a magic picture changer. So we're going to be die cutting some Spiffy Speckles cardstock with the largest stitched rectangle die. And then we're going to do some fun inking with the cloudy stencil to create a background. So we're working on the background and then later we'll build the magic picture changer. And I love this cloudy stencil. It's one of my favorite things. And right here we have minty fresh ink and we're inking onto that Spiffy Speckles paper. And this color combo is so pretty. And and so we're going to ink on the stencil and then move onto the paper. So off of the stencil onto the paper. And then what you do with the stencil is you can turn it uh, and get a different cloud shape and then ink it up again. Once again, starting on the stencil and moving off of it onto the paper. And that's what gives these beautiful clouds. So I just kind of mix and match, choose different clouds. The more you switch between the clouds, the more you get this kind of billowy, cloudy sky. Um, and I think it's just looking so pretty. I love it. Uh, we're going to add a little cloud here at the end. And then once we add those clouds, I always add a little inking at the bottom edge just to make sure there's not a bright white area on this background. We use that same largest stitched rectangle die to die cut some cilantro cardstock and we're going to die cut grass from one end and then a simple stitched hillside border from the other because we're going to be layering these two pieces. Then we're gonna add some inking to these pieces just to give them kind of a cool dynamic look with some Lucky Clover Distress Oxide ink. But right here, you're gonna notice that I have a heat embossed sentiment on that hill. <laughs> I went ahead and heat embossed the sentiment on the wrong one. I should have done it on the grass. I'm gonna do that in just a little bit. I actually realize it it during this moment when I'm like, oh gosh, I heat embossed the sentiment on the wrong side. <laughs> so anyways, not a big deal. I went ahead and inked up those edges and now we're going to do some splatters. So I'm going to smear my ink on the block and then add some water to the block. And this is a fun technique by Rebecca that I think is really awesome because it gives you really fine splatters. So I'm going to mix the water with the ink, pick up some on the paintbrush, and then I'm going to be tapping the edge of the block. You'll see there I added just a little bit more ink because I had added just a little bit too much water. You see I'm tapping the edge of the block and it makes very fine little splatters. So if you ever struggle with splatters that are just too big, this is a good way to kind of control your splatters and get a really fun look. So I went ahead and just kept tapping the edge, getting lots of splatters on there. And now I'm going to set these aside to dry so that I can do the heat embossing on the correct one in just a little bit. While those are drying, we're going to do some more inking. So here we have some of our wood grain cardstock in white, and we're going to die cut that with the magic picture changer add-on, and then do some fun inking on this to give it kind of a barn look. So we're going to use candied apple and uh, barn door distressing. I figure it says barn, so it must be the right color, right? And so we're going to do the lighter color towards the inside of this piece, and then we'll do the darker red towards the outside, um, just to give like a little bit of a gradient, which is really pretty and you can see that that wood grain texture that embossed detail is kind of peeking through our inking. Then to give it kind of like an old weathered barn look we're going to take some black soot distress ink and go around the edges and that's going to give it just like looking like an old barn door or old barn window right um, and so I added a little bit too much of the black soot that's okay I just went right back to my red and we're just going to ink over those edges there just so that there's more red and not so much distressy on the outsides. Now we're recreating a card by Megan and Megan loves her splatter. So we're gonna do some more. And so smeared some black soot distress ink on the mat, adding some water. We're gonna pick it up with a paintbrush and then tap the paintbrush. And then I'm gonna go in, this is just a dry towel here and I'm just picking up the excess there cause I don't want those spots to be too dark. So I'm gonna splatter some and then you'll see I come back in with the towel to pick up that ink so that it's not such a dark spot but a little bit more weathered looking. 
Then we're gonna move on to adding some white splatter. So I'm gonna use my Copic white here, but any white acrylic paint will do. This just happens to be what I have. And so I'm gonna add some to the mat, add a little bit of water, and then we're gonna tap the paintbrush to create splatters with this as well. And this is gonna give a really cool weathered look. This step isn't necessary for making the card, but it's really fun to get inky and create this really beautiful weathered wood idea. Now that the grass pieces have had time to dry, I can finally go back and heat emboss on the actual piece I meant to heat emboss on, which is the grass. And so I'm gonna stamp with some clear heat embossing ink and I'm gonna do some light tapping on the Misty. This is another trick by Megan and it makes it so that the letters are nice and fine so that when you add the heat embossing powder, it's a really beautiful detailed image. So instead of pressing really hard on the Misty where you might smear the ink, just tap it and you'll get a perfect look. We'll add some white heat embossing powder and then we're gonna heat that up and now we have this beautiful bright white sentiment on our grassy piece. Next up, we're gonna take out an oldie but a goodie. This is our wonderful window die and it has this beautiful little kind of like window box thing that we're gonna use. And then this is the tab piece for the Magic Picture Changer. We're cutting both of those out of some paper bag cardstock and we're gonna ink it up with some dark brown ink. This is gathered twigs just to give it a little bit of an inky look so that it matches the grass and that kind of barn door window that we were working on. Now that we have all of our scene building parts, we're gonna work on the actual magic picture changer mechanism. And so we're gonna be using those two main dies, and this is the larger main pocket, and then we have the tab that's the moving tab we'll use in just a little bit. So we have a nice long piece of cardstock here that we're gonna be doing our stamping on, and we're gonna be stamping some flowers from garden before and afters, which are so cute. So stamp that in some jet black ink, and then just gonna add some color with Copic markers. Next up, we're going to be creating a mask. And so we're gonna use a full stick post-it note and we're gonna die cut it with the coordinating die for that image. And this is a trick that Megan does. And this is a really nice and easy way to use a coordinating die as a mask instead of having to fussy cut everything. Now lining up this mask could be difficult, but this is a fun trick to make it nice and easy. I'm using the flashlight on my phone and just shining light through the paper so that I can see right through it and line up that mask perfectly. Now, if you were at home, you could just use the light coming in through your window, but since I'm on camera here, I figured I'd use the phone flashlight and it worked perfectly. And then now we can take some tumbled glass distress ink and just gonna ink up starting in the center of that mask and going around it so that there's this pretty blue sky around our flowers. Then now we're at my favorite part and that's removing the mask. And now you'll see how pretty this looks. Because we use the coordinating die, it has that pretty white border all of the way around and it was a quick and easy mask that didn't require a lot of fussy cutting. Now the idea for this card is that the goat ate the flowers. That's what's gonna happen with the magic picture changer. So to have the goat eat the flowers, I'm actually just gonna use some post-it note tape. You could use washi tape too. And I'm just gonna cover up the flowers as if he ate them. Now when I did that, I noticed the little bottom flowers were peeking out just a little bit. That's not a problem at all. I just cut off another piece of the post-it note tape and then I'm just gonna use the little pointy edge there to cover up the bottom part of those shorter flowers there. So I'm gonna take one more piece and cover that one up. And so this is a quick and easy way to get this look. And you'll see here, I'm gonna hold it up to the camera so you can see exactly what it looks like. Now we're gonna ink up this whole thing with our jet black ink. And then as soon as we have that inked up, we can peel back that post-it note tape and you'll see now our flowers don't have ink and then we can stamp that right onto the cardstock. And this is so cute because now the goat has eaten all the flowers. Now here you'll see that I didn't exactly line up my tape perfectly, but that's no big deal at all. I just took a black marker and I just finished off those little areas that didn't stamp perfectly. And then we're gonna add some color with our Copic markers. Now we're gonna create another mask. We're gonna stamp those flowers onto the full stick post-it. We're gonna die cut it with that coordinating die. And then we're just gonna cut the flower tops off. Once again, as if the goat ate the flowers. And then we'll have a mask that's going to perfectly line up over these little flower pieces that we just did. So this is kind of a lot of work for this card, but honestly, it's so worth it in the end. It's so cute. And I like doing things like this. Sometimes I just have time to sit down and make a card that takes me a long time and I can do all these fun and cool techniques and this is one of those cards. Now we're gonna use our flashlight technique again to help us line up that mask and then we're gonna do inking just like we did before with the same color, the tumble glass, to help fill in our sky. 
then we can peel up that mask and you'll see that we've got that white border around our adorable little leaves that are left over after our goat ate them. Then we can bring back our other picture and now we're gonna start working on the magic picture changer mechanism. Now you always have to think, what is the first picture I wanna show up? And the first one I wanna show up is the flowers because he's gonna eat them. That'll be the second picture. So your first picture always goes with the larger pocket piece. And so I'm gonna look through that viewfinder window and line it up and I'm taking note to see exactly where I'm lining it up, which is the bottom edge of the lip of that planter. So I have that as my guide for when I line up the next one. So I'm keeping that there in my brain to remember that. We're going to hold it in place with some low tack tape and then run it through the die cut machine and we'll have the first part of our mechanism. Now we're gonna take the smaller pull tab die piece. We're gonna look through that viewfinder again, and you'll see I'm lining it up right with the bottom lip of that planter box, exactly like we did before. We're gonna hold it in place and run it through the die cut machine. And this is gonna assure us that both of our planter boxes are gonna be in the exact same position. Next, we're gonna work with our larger pocket piece, and it has some score lines that the die created for us, so we're gonna fold it in half along that score line there, and you'll see there's these skinny little tabs on the side. We're gonna fold along those score lines too. Then we're gonna take out our eighth inch double-sided tape, and we're gonna add those to the inside of those tabs that we just folded, and to the outside of those tabs that we just folded. So at the end, it'll be four different pieces of tape. Then we're gonna flip it back over looking to the inside of our pocket and we're gonna peel up that liner paper and then we're gonna push down onto those folds. And that's gonna create the track that our moving piece is going to go along. And so I'm just using a bone folder here to secure those down really well. Now, one of the tricks to the magic picture changer is to use one of these powder tools to get the magic picture changer working really well. So I'm going along the edges of where I put the tape and then also along the edges of all those little, like kind of little fingers there that are gonna be the parts that are moving. And we're gonna do the same powder tool on the other one. The reason for this is the powder actually reduces the friction of the two pieces moving together and makes them move together really nicely. So it's a really awesome trick for this. Next, we're gonna take our moving tab piece and we're gonna fit that tab through the slot in the pocket, just like that. Now you'll notice that there are four slots and there are four little tabby finger pieces. Well, those are each gonna feed into each other, kind of like a little bastic weave. So you're gonna put each one through each of the slots. So each finger is gonna go through the next slot and then the next slot. Then you'll see as we pull the tab, it moves really, really well. Now we're gonna look at the inside of the pocket and I'm taking nice care to make sure that my moving piece, that tab, is in between those two little tracks that we created. Then we can peel up the liner paper and we're gonna close the pocket shut, securing the whole thing together. And now you'll see that it's starting to move and you can see that picture change happening. Now the Magic Picture Changer has this decorative piece that has the little arrow that lets the recipient know what to do. Well, it also has a function. It works as a stopper for this whole mechanism. So we're just gonna sandwich that at the very top of that tab. And then you'll see that the edge of the paper is gonna keep our tab piece from moving too far into the Magic Picture Changer, making it an awesome working mechanism. Now we're going to decorate the Magic Picture Changer and we're gonna use that add-on that we inked up earlier. And the adhesive is gonna go from corner to corner, just like that, and then along the top and the bottom. We're not gonna put any adhesive on the sides because we want our mechanism to move freely. And then we can layer that over top and now we're kind of looking at a barn kind of into the window. And I love how this is looking so much. Now to give a little bit more of that window look, we're gonna take this stitch square die that's included in the Magic Picture Changer and we're gonna die cut that out of white cardstock and that's gonna give us kind of like the look of a window frame. So we're just gonna layer that right on top. And then remember that little window box that we inked up earlier? We're gonna layer that right over the edge of that little planter box that is already there on the Magic Picture Changer and that's gonna give this even more of that kind of window frame with the little flower box below it kind of look. Now, once I layer that over top, I realized that the little square edges were sticking out. So I'm just cutting those off and it doesn't need to look nice because no one's ever going to see that. And then now I can layer that little window box right over top. 
To add some color to that arrow, I went ahead and die cut that little tab piece again out of some cilantro cardstock, but we're just gonna use the little interior triangle and we're gonna inlay that into the die cut and it's gonna make it just look really, really pretty. And it's also bringing out the green of the leaves and the green of those hills that we worked on earlier. So now we're gonna start to build this whole card front. So first up, we're gonna layer our hill and that's gonna be all the way in the background. Next, we'll add some tape runner to the back of that magic picture changer mechanism. And then to decide on placement on the card, I'm gonna take the grass and just kind of lay it there as a guide because I want the grass to cover up the bottom of this whole piece. So that's kind of my guide and now I'm gonna center it down and press down. But then to add the grass, we're gonna add some foam tape to that so that it's gonna be at the same level as the Magic Picture Changer because all those layers in the Magic Picture Changer give it some height. So we're just adding some foam along the bottom and on the edges and then now you can see it's nice and flush with the Magic Picture Changer and we've got that beautiful grass kind of peeking up. Now here is that awesome you goat this stamp set. Went ahead, stamped and colored and die cut a bunch of the images from this set. And we're gonna start to layer these together. Now this was something really amazing that Megan did in her card that was really easy to do and packs a big punch. So I'm taking my scissors and I'm just going along the bottom of his snout and then I'm gonna go up into his little smile there. And that's going to give me a place to place my flower. So you'll see, I'm just gonna tuck it right under his snout and then right into that little smile where we cut that fine line and it's gonna look like he's holding the flower, which is going along with our whole, the goats ate the flowers magic picture changer theme. So now for this little guy, I'm just gonna cut right along his smile as well. And then I'm gonna tuck another flower into him. Then we can start to add goats into the scene. So I'm gonna layer this guy onto the scene. And then for our next guy, I wanna have him on the windowsill overlapping the magic picture changer. So I'm gonna add some foam squares just to the left side of him. And that's gonna pop him up so he won't get in the way of the magic picture changer movement. And then the rest of him is just gonna kind of float over that moving window. So he's got foam on the left and just nothing on the right. Then we can start to add the rest into our scene. So we're gonna add this cute little goat. And then I'm gonna take some of those grasses and tuck those behind the hill and then add a little flower there as well. We'll add the speech bubble from the set with a little heart in it right at the top. And then to help fill in the scene at the top, since we had ink some clouds in the background, I thought it would be fun to add clouds. And I always go to the all the clouds stamp set whenever I need clouds, cause it's got all the clouds in lots of different sizes. So I went ahead and kind of went through my stash. I have a bunch of them stamped and colored and die cut all ready to go with my stamp set. And I just went through, picked what sizes look best and added those in. And then I thought it would be fun to add a sun, which is also from the Owl the Cloud stamp set behind that cloud there. I thought it brought the yellow of the flowers up into the top of the card, which looks really, really pretty. Now we're gonna take a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some tape runner to that, and then we can layer this whole scene on top. Now to add a little decoration, I'm gonna be using the brand new glazes. So we have a clear glaze and a sparkle glaze and I'm gonna use both on this card. So first up, we're gonna start with the clear glaze. And for the clear glaze, we're gonna add that to the bell on that cute little goat and then also onto their horns as well, just to add a little shine. And then we'll add a little bit of that clear glaze to the heart as well, which is gonna give it this, it's kind of like a little 3D crystally clear look on top. And I just love how it adds a little extra something special to the card already. But of course there's a sparkle one too. And so we needed to add some sparkles as well. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the sparkle pen and just go along the inside edges of the cloud and not the whole cloud, just a little bit of it. So it kind of looks like the sun's hitting it and there's just a little bit of sparkle. And then we'll add some sparkle to the flower centers as well, just to bring that little sparkly area down to the bottom too. So just a little dab and you get this three dimensional little sparkly area on each of those yellow flower centers. And here's a little close up look so you can see the beautiful sparkle and then also the shine on the heart. Oh, it's so cute. And then we've got the sparkle on the flower centers as well. It's just this extra little touch. And now the card is all done. And as you pull the tab, the flower tops disappear just as if the goats had eaten the flower tops. And I think it's so cute. This card just makes me smile. This would make anybody's day. It was so much fun to create. Oh my goodness. I just love Megan's cards and making them is always a treat because I always get to learn a new little technique. I text her and Rebecca texts her and says, Ooh, how'd you do this? How'd you do this? And I always learn something new. So it was so much fun to make this and magic picture changers always make 
make me smile. And next up, Shari has an adorable slimline card. So take it away, Shari. Today I'm making a slimline card in landscape orientation with the cute little goats from You Goat This. So I've already colored, cut out my images. I'm also going to add in the little barn from Hey There to set back in the background of my landscape that I'm going to create. So I've used the largest slimline rectangle to cut a piece of moonstone cardstock for my sky and cilantro cardstock for my grass. And then I also just cut a piece of white paper that's the same size and that's where I'm going to cut my fence. So I'm using a stitch slimline hillside to cut the top of my hill. This is going to be the grass in my scene. And then I'm going to line this up with that white piece of cardstock. Now I did not cut this with the stitch rectangle because I don't need those stitching details. Everything's going to be covered up. And then I'm taking the new Picket Fence slimline border die and I'm just going to butt the end of it right up against the hill I've already cut. So the fence is going to line up perfectly with that hill and I can just hold that in place with some tape. Now it may end up being slightly off but that is easy to fix. So I'm, you can see here how that matches pretty closely. It may have shifted slightly but we can glue the hill on to where it matches perfectly and then trim off any white on the outside edge. So you can see how to line it up perfectly, I've got a little bit on the bottom. So I'll do that here in just a little bit. First, I'm going to move on to my sky. I've got that piece of moonstone cardstock cut with that slimline rectangle and I'm going to add some stenciled clouds to the sky. So I'm using the slimline cloud stencil and then I'm gonna use some Yeti ink. So this is white pigment ink. This is gonna sit on top of that colored cardstock. And then I'm using a foam blending tool to lightly add some of that white ink just at the edge of those clouds. So this is going to lighten up that blue and we're going to get that hint of cloud in the sky. And I'm just blending that out a little bit so you can see there how we get those nice clouds. Now I only need to do this a couple times because the whole bottom is going to get covered up by the grass and the fence at the bottom. So only about two of these are going to be seen. So now I have my cloudy sky. You can see there what's going to get covered up. Since that hill dips down a little bit, what I thought I'd do is just a little cloud down here in the dip of the hill. It doesn't have to be perfect on that right side. It's going to get covered up. And then just a little bit of white so it's not so blue right at the horizon line. I'm also adding some white watercolor splatters for some texture up in the sky. So I'll set that aside to dry and work on my grass. I also like to define the top edges of my die cuts. You've seen me do this a lot with that Lucky Clover Distress Oxide on that cilantro cardstock. I just think that it makes this really cool look of that darker into lighter. Those two colors together look amazing. And then I'm going to add some splatters to that as well. So this is a dark green watercolor. You could also use some Distress ink if you like, but this just adds texture to that grass as well. So now to put my hill that the splatters have all dried on with my fence. So I'm adding some liquid glue so that I have some wiggle room to shift this around as needed. And I'm lining up the top of that hill with the bottom of the fence. So you can see I have a little bit of white peeking out at the very bottom, but what I will do is just trim that off with some scissors. So now my hill and my fence match up perfectly and I can start to add stuff to my card base. So I have a three and a half by eight and a half inch card base. I'm gonna go ahead and add that panel that has my clouds and my sky. And then I can add my fence and my grass right along the bottom. 
So I'm just using liquid glue and adding a little dot of glue to the top of each of these fence posts so that everything's glued down nicely and I don't have anything that's going to catch and get pulled up. So I've laid out all my goats kind of in the placement I want them. And I'm going to start out with my barn and tuck that behind those fence posts before they're glued down too much. Now it is floating in the sky, but that's going to get covered up by the goat. So I'm placing it in such a way that you see most of the barn. You're never going to know that it's floating in the sky because the goat is covering that part up. I'm adding my goats with foam squares to give some dimension to the front of the card. So all my background pieces are nice and flat and then my foreground pieces pop up. And I just love all these goats. My favorite thing is coloring them in all these different colors. So you can see that I colored every one in a different gray or brown so that no two goats are the same. And I think this one jumping is really fun. That's why I put him on top of that hay bale there. He looks like he's about to escape maybe and jump over that fence. <laughs> he's the mischievous one, I think. And then I've also got some of the extra little elements from the set, the grass that I'm just going to add around that hay bale to kind of give it some more interest. And also some of the little flowers. This is just going to add some nice little pops of color mixed in with all these gray and brown goats. And you can tell I'm just trying to figure out where exactly I want to place the flowers. So now that I have all my pieces where I want them, I'm going to work on my sentiment. And I'm going to do something a little different with this. You could stamp it right in the sky. But when I've inked on a sky, I don't really like to do that. So I'm just basically making my own little sentiment square. So I've just stamped this on some speckled eggshell cardstock and just trimmed it down with my paper trimmer into a rectangle that fits around that sentiment. And I'm just going to pop that right up here in the sky. And then here is my finished goat slimline card. I think those are so cute. They really fill the slimline perfectly when you use all the goats in the set. Oh my goodness, this card is so cute, Shari. I love it so much. And I love the mini slimline cards so much. I think them stacked up like that is just adorable. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And first up is this gorgeous card by Tammy. And I love how she used Henry's ABCs as part of her sentiment. Next up, this scene that Yanea created is so beautiful. Aren't those colors just stunning? This card just makes me smile. I love that Elise made this into a Mother's Day card. It's so cute and fun, especially with that I Heart Ma. And then Maureen's card is so adorable. She added some balloons and made it a birthday surprise, which is just so sweet and fun. In this next card, we use the brand new giant Happy Mother's Day and flower market papers with the goats, and I think it's just so sweet. I can't wait to send this one out. And then this one by Audrey is so fun. I love that she used Sorry It's Past Your Birthday from our Hey There stamp set as the sentiment. Here, this card by Elena is just stunning. I love her layers of pattern paper and all those cute goats around the goat in the middle. He is the goat. <laughs> and then this is the magic picture changer by Megan that inspired us to make ours today. Grace added some mountains to the back of her platform pop-up card to create the perfect scene for her adorable goats in this fun interactive card. And then this card by Kara. Oh my goodness, I love how she did her sentiment out of Henry's ABCs and cut it from the brand new flower market paper. This card by Lynette is just so sweet. It just makes me smile and I love how she used those stitch clouds in the background. And here Letitia's color palette is so fun and bright and she used our brand new window scene spring stamp set as the perfect scene for the goats. So we cannot wait to see what you guys do with this set so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!